geopolitical uncertainty is rising in the markets. Uranium and the overall market was down on Friday. We are going to go over a lot of data, a lot of alarming things coming out, and this could really have a big effect on the overall price of oil and uranium in the positive side, but the overall market could have a big correction coming or worse. We're going to talk about that. We're going to look at instances from the past. Remember, the market is always forward-looking. Nobody can predict the market. Nobody can really time the market. Everything in the market is speculation. We're just going to go over the data and I'm going to let you decide. So we're going to jump right into this. So this is very unfortunate with what's going on in Russia with Ukraine. And we're going to look at some instances from the past when we had geopolitical events and what it did to the overall market. So the first thing here we can see is the largest drop total drawdown overall was Pearl Harbor. Now, the second largest is what we're going to talk about today, and I think it's very related to what could happen with Russia and Ukraine, and that was Kuwait in 1990. We saw Iraq's invasion of Kuwait August 2nd, 1990. It initially just dropped the markets down about a percent, and the effect overall long term was a 16.9% drawdown total. It took 71 days to hit the bottom and then 189 days to recover. Kuwait obviously is a lot different than what's happening in Ukraine, but there are a lot of similarities. We're going to look at that. Before we jump into the charts with Kuwait, we're going to look at uranium first. Now, this is very interesting because the five-year chart on uranium is looking very bullish. Although we've seen spot prices drop somewhat, obviously from their high, they are in a uprising right now, a bullish flag pennant. And this is very interesting because we're starting to see these higher lows and then actually lower highs here. So it's making this pennant here. This is usually very bullish. And uh, with what Cameco recently said, I think that we're going to start to see more volume in the spot market. But the overall market, that is what we got to look at. Uranium has to trade in the overall market, uranium stocks. And because they're so small, they are probably going to go down to the downside if this happens. Now, as always, we do not know. This is all speculation. That is all what the market is. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We are in the window when an invasion could begin at any time, should Vladimir Putin decide to order it. I will not comment on the details of our intelligence information, but I do want to be clear. It could begin during the Olympics. We encourage all American citizens who remain in Ukraine to depart immediately. We want to be crystal clear on this point. Any American in Ukraine should leave as soon as possible and in any event in the next 24 to 48 hours. We obviously cannot predict the future. We don't know exactly what is going to happen. But the risk is now high enough and the threat is now immediate enough that this is what prudence demands. If you stay, you are assuming risk with no guarantee that there will be any other opportunity to leave and there no prospect of a U.S. military evacuation in the event of a Russian invasion. The overall market, you know, really was nervous by this. Now, if Russia invades, the U.S. and Biden, they're saying that they will not send troops to rescue Americans in Ukraine. Honestly, in my opinion, this is false. They're not going to officially do this, okay? There's, you know, reports already that the special forces, U.S. special forces have been in Ukraine and just judging by what I know, this is the case. And you're not going to see this plastered all over the media. This is from the Los Angeles Times. This was the day after Iraq invaded Kuwait. Now, it is very similar to what's going on today. And you're going to see the similarities. We'll talk about that. And I'll talk about the differences and how things could actually change very quickly, what the market might do, what it'll do to uranium. But what was very interesting is after Iraq invaded Kuwait, shocked the already gloomy market, it said here in the Los Angeles Times, and it sent the Dow Jones down. And it was about, I think it was about 1.2%, it says here, down to 1.2%. A lot of people didn't know this was going to happen. This is very different compared to what's going on in Ukraine. Everyone thinks you know, Vladimir Putin is going to invade. Now that is what the reports are saying. Now people really didn't know this was going to happen. This was a big surprise. My dad was active duty during this time. He was over there, uh, you know, in the middle East, all during this conflict as well as the cold war. So this, he said 
told me yesterday that this was a you know pretty much a shock, very different than what's going on today. But there are a lot of other similarities, especially with the market. Quickly lifted oil and gold stocks. It clobbered those of the auto companies and others whose fortunes are tied to fuel costs. Also battered were the shares of many of the blue chip growth stocks and other issues that had held up during the market until recent session. So we saw that decline in not only that market, but the overall world market said that the invasion raised the kind of general uncertainties that traders so dislike. It was also read as important of rising oil prices, which could fuel inflation and keep the Federal Reserve Board from easing interest rates. These worries mingled with recent anxieties about bad corporate earnings and a weakening economy. The upshot is nobody wants any uncertainty exposure in a market like this. So they said that traders were also concerned that congressional budget negotiations might scrap considerations of any new energy taxes in the face of the latest rise in oil prices. Hmm. And it says that this suggested that a deal to ease the budget deficit may not be forthcoming, which might in turn work to keep interest rates high. Sounds like today. Last part of this we're going to read, but late afternoon, others were hopeful that the market had already come through the worst part of the crisis. Iraq's announcement that it planned to leave Kuwait's soil sounds to some people like this is going to be settled quickly. So as we know, that wasn't the case. So what you read from politicians, Putin, the government, it's usually not what's really happening. And I'm going to tell you that everything you see related to troops being deployed Everything is behind, okay? I was active duty for a decade plus in the military. When when the media reports, for the most part, they are very behind on what's really going on over there. Now, during this time, we didn't have you know special forces or anything over there at the time. We weren't really ready. Now, you know, they were in the region, but we did not see, you know, we did not see this coming. And we do see what's coming with possible Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Very different on that aspect. So the Dow drop would be even far steeper without the upward lift provided by oil stocks. So, you know, the, these actually held up the market during that time. So it is very interesting to look back. Now, this is exactly, this is a chart. This is August 2nd and August 3rd of 1990. You can see how much the Dow dropped. But look at the Dow numbers. We were at 2,883 and boom, it dropped months and months. It took to recover just to get back to where it was. I want to talk about on the other part of the world. We can see here Japan. Now, Japan, we talked about in the previous video, we talked about how it hit a market peak right here in December, and then it would go through a decade plus of declines, the lost decades, and this really set it off right here. And I think the US markets are somewhere around this area. I do not think they're going to react the same they did in 1990. We are in a whole different era. Things are a lot different, and I think we are very similar to what happened with Japan in a lot of aspects. We're different in some ways, but you can see the same thing. It was devastation to the Japanese stock market during that time, and I think we got to look at that. If you see the all-time, now the Japanese stock market has never recovered since from this drop, and especially from the peak. So just because stock markets in the U.S. might have gone up and continue to go up, it does not mean that we will see that if this happens. Now, it is a good buying opportunity, in my opinion, for me. I am very heavy cash, so I think uranium is going to go up. Oil probably also will go up. We saw a big drawdown in uranium stocks on Friday when the overall market dropped. That is what the uranium, the, the percentages for the day did. We saw a rally the day before because of what Cameco was saying. Now, you got to remember, Russia is providing the U.S. with 20% of its enrichment. In my previous video, we went over the enrichment process and how it relates to Russia, the overall world, and why the U.S. depends on a lot of other countries, and it's not very good. I think it's going to send the price up and up and up. Now, we can see oil. is a 10-year chart. It's looking very bullish. We're seeing probably a break of $100 very soon. I think uranium will probably do that $100 break as well if, if Russia does invade, but... Palladium is another thing. Russia actually, you see this chart here, looking very bullish. Russia provides, it says, about 25 to 30% of the world's supply of palladium. So we are already starting to see the prices run up. Now, uranium being that you know opaque market, I think it's going to take a little bit more time to see that. But all energy commodities, as we can see here, are doing pretty good. Pretty good for the year. The one day, you know, on Friday, they were up 
a lot of stuff was up, obviously, because of this. Now, if we see an invasion, I think we're going to see this parabolic move in everything related to energy here, especially, I think, uranium and definitely oil. Now, the the overall aspect of the market, people are fearful. We're hearing, you know, the government say that Americans should leave Ukraine. Now, I've been covering this for almost two months now. I've been talking about this. A lot of people thought it was FUD. A lot of people thought nothing was going to happen. But remember, when the media is, you know, the overall government and what the media is saying, it doesn't always necessarily mean what's really going on over there. You got to really dig into this. This is actually the data that says what troops are kind of deployed over there. We've got 34,000 U.S. troops in Germany and Poland, about 6,200. Now, recently, they said they're going to be sending 3,000 more U.S. troops. And we are seeing as far as it says here, there are no troops listed, US troops and you know UK troops listed in Ukraine. But as we probably know, that is probably false. And we see Russia really building up their troops along the border. Uh, there's a lot of data I'll show you in a little while because of that. And it is you know very alarming because uranium and oil is going to go up Yes, that is nice, but I did not want it to happen this way. I think it's very unfortunate. It's going to be very bad for a lot of people there. I'm not celebrating this. In fact, I really wish this was not happening, obviously. I'm not pro wanting this to happen, going to war. Uh, this is not good. And I think this is going to wreak havoc on the overall world markets. Now, commodities will probably see run up. Today, Biden is supposed to talk with Putin and they're, you know, really wanting to ease the tensions there. But obviously, a lot of this, I think, is show uh, what's being showed on the media. You know, obviously, the media is trying to get clicks, but it's probably going to come at a time that no one really knows. Honestly, it's really odd that they're saying at the end of by the end of the Olympics with headlines like this, you see this they're pushing a narrative, obviously. But I think it is very similar to what was happening in Kuwait during that time. But the only difference is we have an idea that this could happen. And this is why I'm heavy cash. This is Stars and Stripes. They reported that there are special forces in a small American military contingent that remain in Ukraine. And they also have 100 National Guard from Florida troops. They're still in advisory roles. This is just what's being reported by the media. Just knowing from my own operations in the military that the media is getting word of this. There's a lot more troops probably already there. They've probably been deployed there a lot sooner. And from my sources, you know, you just, you know, you can't trust the what's being said by the media. I'll just leave it at that. Now, you know, we see here 3,000 troops being deployed to Poland, the White House says. But then you get something like this over there in Russia. The White House denies media reports about the next sending of military to Poland. You know, obviously the United States government and same thing with Putin. They're not going to admit that they're sending troops, you know, over putting them in harm's way. This is actually a lot of the Russian troops that they're actually putting out there. Uh, people keeping track of everything. Satellite imagery here. You can see uh, they're saying that, you know, a lot of movement's been happening. There, a lot of people are keeping track of this. And it's pretty interesting what the, you know, what the modern age can do. You can see Russian military camps here. This is, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of forces. And for them to not... You know, it's, it's a big waste of money, obviously, if they're not planning on invading. You know, this costs a lot of money. And in my opinion, we are very likely to see an invasion. Now, if you don't already know, they, you know, Russia has already done something like this before. And, you know, in 2014. So it is very possible that this could happen again. Nobody knows, again, really what could happen. So the overall markets, in my opinion, would see this as a very negative thing, obviously, and it probably would pull down everything, including uranium stocks for the for the time being. Now, when uranium prices, people start to get wind that obviously oil, gas, uranium, these things are going to go up in price, the stocks probably will correct. But there's probably going to be a massive drop because they are so small compared to the overall market. So the next thing we need to keep an eye on is the interest rates. Now, we know that they're probably going to rise soon, but the former Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers said that the Federal Reserve ought to hold an immediate meeting to end its quantitative easing program. They are meeting on, I think, February 14th. So they are really pushing this that we need to have an emergency meeting to possibly raise these rates. Now, imagine what the market would do if that happened and imagine what would happen 
if everyone's you know fixated on the Super Bowl this weekend or the Olympics, you know these are prime times when these things could happen. Uh, while everyone's really not paying attention. And that's why I love history. I love to go back and see what happened in the stock market when these specific things happen. Whenever we have any geopolitical uncertainty, the market drawdown, it's not necessarily big on the first day. The real drawdown, it's a long-term you know, bleed because we're at such a peak now in the overall market. S&P 500, it could drop like crazy, pulling everything down, like I said before. So as always, I've been covering this stuff for a good month plus. Now, a lot of people called this FUD. A lot of people said, you know, they don't think anything's going to happen. And I hope that they're right. I hope nothing happens. For the past month, the U.S. government has been ordering families of diplomats to leave Ukraine. We're now starting to see that uh, all across the front there. You know, the big thing here is with energy prices and commodity prices, I really do think that they're going to go up. We're going to see this long-term contracting. 700 million pounds are going to come back into the market. 40 million already from Cameco. I think this is very bullish for the overall uranium sector. Because the U.S. gets 20% of its enriched uranium from Russia, I honestly think that the uranium price will probably see a big spike. If we can break $55, $60, Maybe uranium stocks could decouple from the market. As we saw when Iraq invaded Kuwait, we, we saw that oil stocks actually went up during that time. As always, this is just speculation as everything in the market is. So we're looking at data. We're looking at the past. We're looking at what happened with other geopolitical instances and what the markets did. So as we can say right now, if Russia does invade Ukraine, then we are definitely going to see the overall market correct in a big way because we are so high up in the market. This could be a long-term bleed in the overall market. It might not drop you know, 10, 10% in a day, but we could see this long-term bleed. And I think this really would have investors capitulate in a lot of stocks, bringing it down even more and more. So we got to keep an eye on this. Now, uranium, oil, palladium, they're probably going to go up in price, but the stocks themselves could see a drawdown especially in the short term, Russia does invade. Let's hope it doesn't happen. Let's hope Russia is just trying to show their presence, obviously the border there. But in my opinion, with what I've been hearing, the overall market should be on high alert because as the government's saying, it is very likely that Russia does invade. So as we've seen from history, whenever there is a war, usually economies in the long run start to strengthen and I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here, but I do know that I will be on high alert and I will be heavy cash to take advantage of these low prices, especially in uranium stocks. That's really what I'm looking at. But if we get an overall market correction, it's going to be all hands on deck. It's going to get crazy in the markets. As always, this is not financial advice. Please hit that like and subscribe button below if you want to see more coverage on this.